Bugatti have released a new hypercar under their new brand name Bugatti Rimac named Tourbillon. The Tourbillon shares no parts whatsoever with the Veyron or Chiron and is not a rebodied Nevera. It's a 3.2 million pound, 1800 horsepower, carbon, titanium, sapphire crystal, tarmac annihilating hybrid work of art. Let's get into the video. In November 2021, the Volkswagen Group sold 55% of Bugatti Automobile to Remac Automobile and transferred the remainder 45% of the Bugatti shares to Porsche AG. Remember here that Porsche AG is still owned by the Volkswagen Group, therefore this was purely an internal transfer for those 45%. The Tourbillon is the third in a hypercar series for Bugatti behind the Veyron and Chiron, yet shares no parts whatsoever with those two models. It is a complete new build from the ground up. The Bugatti Tourbillon is named after a piece of engineering excellence implemented in a mechanical luxury watch to mitigate the influence of gravity on the mechanical movement. And Bugatti state that it's this level of excellence that they're implementing in the build of the Bugatti Tourbillon. If you strip away the body panels of the Bugatti Tourbillon, the whole rolling chassis itself is a piece of engineering excellence. They even had a separate design engineer just for the actual rolling chassis. That is impressive. Veyron and Chiron respectively broke the fastest production car records and Bugatti Remac are on record as stating that they're expecting similar excellence from the Bugatti Tourbillon. Only 250 standard production Bugatti tourbillons will ever be made and the production run begins in 2026. The Bugatti tourbillon is powered by a naturally aspirated 8.3 litre Cosworth derived V16 hybrid which produces in total with the hybrid system 1,775 brake horsepower or 1,800 horsepower. Horsepower and brake horsepower are not the same. The hybrid system is made up of three 250 kilowatt motors, two at the front, one at the back, and they are powered by a single 800 volt, 25 kilowatt per hour battery, which weighs 200 kilograms. To put it into context, I weigh 103 kilograms, so that's twice my weight as a battery plant situated in the center of the car. That's a lot of additional weight. The hybrid system is configured with three 250 kilowatt EV motors, two positioned up front, one on each wheel, and one positioned at the rear. The EV motor at the rear also acts as a reverse drive and also acts as starter motor to start the combustion engine. The whole 1800 horsepower power plant is coupled to an eight speed dual clutch transmission. 1800 horsepower through a DCT. I'd like to see that. Cosworth has a name for producing incredible sounding, high performance, naturally aspirated engines. Some good examples of these are the Aston Martin Valkyrie and the Gordon Murray T50. The 1800 horsepower hybrid power plant accelerates the tourbillon from 0 to 60 in under two seconds and up to a maximum limited speed of 277 miles per hour. But probably the most impressive statistic is that it can accelerate from 0 to 250 in 25 seconds. That's some 7 seconds faster than its predecessor, the Chiron. The three 250 kilowatt motors are powered by a 25 kilowatt per hour oil-cooled 800 volt battery and this enables you to drive the Bugatti Tourbillon in stealth mode that's EV mode alone for a range of 37 miles. Yes, you can actually drive the Bugatti Tourbillon hypercar, 1800 horsepower hypercar in EV mode alone for 37 miles. That's just crazy. Incidentally, another interesting metric is that the actual Cosworth derived naturally aspirated V16 engine weighs around 256 kilograms. That's 156 kilograms lighter than the Bugatti Chiron's power plant in total. That is an incredible feat of engineering. If you were looking to purchase your first supercar or add a car to your collection, Rich Reviews has already helped multiple owners secure their dream supercar. We have a mix and match of services to help take the pain away to ensure a happy, memorable purchase away from the stress that can be caused by car research and dealing negotiations. Our mix and match of services include telephone support calls, pre-purchase inspection and car collection video. 
For more information, please contact me via a message in the comments below or at the following email address. Now back to the video. The tourbillon implements an interesting external design feature with a spine down the centre of the car carried forward from the horseshoe along the central wiper, along the roof and down the back and even internally down the centre console which harks back to the earlier Bugatti design where cars were riveted together as the structural method for joining two halves together. The tourbillon is 27mm longer than the Chiron. However, when considering the V16 engine is some 40 centimeters longer than the Chiron's W16, it is impressive how Bugatti managed to mitigate the length increase to only 27 millimeters. Moving on to the interior. The interior is an opulent mixture of high-grade leather, titanium and sapphire glass, with the standout feature being the incredibly beautifully designed gauge cluster. Center and foremost of that gauge cluster is an analog combined speedometer and tachometer where the speed goes around the external part of the gauge, in effect the circumference of the gauge, and that tachometer revs and provides the readings towards the center of the gauge. So when the Bugatti tourbillon is screaming towards the horizon, you can see that speed accumulate steadily across the external part circumference of the dial with the rev ranges flicking through to the red line as it hammers through those gears. Absolutely stunning feature and beautiful design. To continue the luxury watch theme, the centralized analog dial cluster is made and built by Concepto Watch, itself a luxury Swiss watch manufacturer. So that obviously continues then the theme of tourbillon. And the centralized duplicate or combined speedometer and tachometer actually looks in some association like a tourbillon as well. Therefore, another reference to tourbillon. Central to the interior of the car is a skeletonized titanium and sapphire glass center console. And there's a little hidden feature at the top of that center console. When you press a button, a screen pops out at the top, fortunately not a touch screen, and this screen is implemented for functionality such as Apple CarPlay and as a reversing camera. And it is actually a compulsory requirement. It is now compulsory to have a reversing camera screen in the interior of a car. Now there's an additional feature there also of this center console. There's a little knob there. If you push that knob, it activates the EV system. And then if you pull on that knob, that fires up the V16 8.3 litre combustion engine. Pretty impressive. Now, because of the exterior design of the Bugatti Tourbillon, which we'll get onto in a minute, it was very important that the central glass dome was kept to certain dimensions. And the only way they can enforce that was to actually keep the seats inside fixed. So the seats do not move on rails. The foot pedal box comes towards you and the steering wheel comes towards you. And the steering wheel comes towards you with the whole gauge binnacle. Another incredible design and unique feature for the Bugatti Tourbillon when you relate it to the Chiron and the Veyron. Moving on to the exterior of the Tourbillon, the Tourbillon shares certain design language with the Chiron and with the Veyron, with the front central horseshoe and the side C-shape. Now the two key ingredients to increasing airspeed through air or to making a car slippery through air is reducing the frontal area or keeping the frontal area small, as small as possible, and reducing the height of the vehicle. The tourbillon achieves that by actually reducing the frontal area substantially less or substantially smaller than the Chiron and it also is 33 millimeters lower in height. Now as I detailed earlier when I was talking about the interior of the car it was important for them to keep that cabin to a certain size so that they could allow it to be 33 millimeters shorter or 33 millimeters lower and they achieved this or one of the ways they achieved this was by having the seats fixed and not on rail so the, so the seats don't move forwards and backwards. The aerodynamics of the tourbillon work by air coming in through the frontal horseshoe design grille, coming up through over the bonnet and then over the roof and then over the rear wing, with that rear wing also acting as an air brake. In addition, there's a vent at the front underneath the headlights and that vent runs all the way along underneath the side flying buttresses all the way down and goes into or provides venting into that beautiful Cosworth derived naturally aspirated V16 engine to provide additional breathing. Of course, when talking about the exterior design of the tourbillon, we must not forget about those beautifully designed electric 
magnetic dihedral doors. Just an incredible additional stunning feature of the tourbillon. In conclusion, it's clear that the Bugatti Tourbillon shares certain external design cues with the Chiron and the Veyron with that frontal horseshoe design and the side profile C shape. However, when considering that the Bugatti Tourbillon is a total ground up new build showing no parts with the Veyron and the Chiron and that beautifully designed Cosworth derived naturally aspirated V16 power plant, also taking into account the beautifully designed interior with that Concepto watch designed front dial cluster and the exterior bodywork design of the car with those beautiful electric dihedral doors. There's no doubting that the Bugatti Tourbillon is a masterclass in innovation.